Hello boys and girls. In today's English lesson, our last lesson of the week, we're going to be completing a comprehension activity. Comprehension is when you read through a piece of text and then you can answer questions based on what you've read. So today we're going to have a go through a comprehension together and then you've got a different comprehension to have a little go with at home and they're all about the Great Fire of London. So this is the comprehension that I'm going to show you and show you how to find the information within the text. And then you're going to have a go at this comprehension, which is uploaded onto the website. So mine is about the Great Fire of London and yours is about Samuel Pepys's diary. So you have your information sheet first and then you have your question sheet as well. So I'm going to read through the information sheet and then we're going to have a go answering some of the questions. The Great Fire of London. On Sunday the 2nd of September 1666, a fire began in a bakery on Pudding Lane in London. The baker had forgotten to put out the fire he had used to bake his bread. Did you know, in 1666, the buildings of London were all made of wood and built very close together, which meant the fire could spread easily. The fire soon started to spread to other buildings. On Sunday evening, buildings were pulled down to try and stop the fire spreading. There were no firefighters in 1666, so people had to try and put out the fire themselves using leather buckets and water from the River Thames. This didn't work very well. Soon, people began to run from the fire, taking their families and belongings onto boats on the river. The fire carried on spreading on Monday and Tuesday, Luckily, on Wednesday, the wind stopped and the people were able to fight the fire with water. The fire destroyed large parts of London, which had to be rebuilt. The new buildings were made of brick. Did you know, even after the Great Fire of London, a fire service was not formed until 1866? So Miss Ford has read the information once. She's now going to keep this information close by because she's going to need to use it to answer the questions. So it says, my first question, number one, where did the Great Fire of London begin? So the word begin is one of my key words there in the question. So I'm going to go to back to the beginning and have a read through. On Sunday, the 2nd of September, 1666, a fire began. Where did it begin? It began in a bakery. So where did the fire begin? It began in a bakery on Pudding Lane in London. Then I go back to my questions and use this information. I don't need to have a guess at spelling because I can use the information from the text. The Great Fire began and I'm going to copy this information out of the text because it's there to help me. Began in a bakery on Pudding Lane. And I'm going to put in London for an extra bit of information. What date did the fire begin on? So last time I was looking for where, now I'm looking for the date. So you can circle or underline to help you remember what key bit of information you're looking for. So now I'm looking for a date. Right, Ooh, let's have a look through. Oh, there's a date here, Monday and Tuesday, another day. Ah, but the date the fire began was Sunday the 2nd of September, 1666. I'll go back to my questions and put the fire began on, use the information within the text, Ooh, Sunday the 2nd of September 1666. You could even write the date the fire began on was 1666. What did the baker forget to do? Hmm, what did the baker forget to do? So I'm going to be looking for the word baker and I need to be looking for keyword forget. It wasn't where does the baker live? It wasn't what does the baker look like? It wasn't how old the baker is. It's what did the, for the baker forget to do? So I'm looking for the keyword baker 
Aha, the baker had forgotten to put out the fire he had used to bake his bread. So what he'd forgotten to do was put out the fire. The baker had forgotten to put out the fire. Now I'm keeping this text really close because this text gives us the answers. You don't have to guess, you use the text to help you solve the problems. What did people use to fight the fire? So now I'm going to be looking about people fighting the fire. Mm, buildings in London, no wood. The fire spread. I'm looking for what people used to fight the fire. The fire started to spread. They pulled buildings down. I'm looking for the word fight the fire. Now, fight the fire might be in there. Let's think about what other words mean similar to fight the fire. So, um, spreading would stop would be another word that would fight the fire, stop the spread. And, ah, people put out the fire. Fire out is another um, interesting word that matches up with fight the fire. Using leather buckets. So what did people use to fight the fire? Well, I think two things really. People pulled down the buildings and they used leather buckets with water to fight the fire. So people, using the word from the question, used leather buckets with water. Leather buckets, using the text to help me, leather buckets with water to fight the fire. And we also saw that they um, pull down to stop the fire. Pull and they pulled down buildings to stop the fire. Okay, next one. Let's read the question really carefully, carefully here. We've got, where did some people take their families and belongings? So we're looking for a where, and also family and belongings. So I'm looking through for the words family and belongings. There's family and belongings. So I'm gonna reread this sentence. Soon people began to run from the fire, taking their family and belongings onto boats on the river. So where would be onto the river, onto boats, onto the river. So where did some people take their families and belongings? Some people took their, and I'm going to use family and belongings from the text, family and belongings onto the boats on the river. There we go. Give two reasons why the fire spread so easily. So I'm looking for that word easily to help me. And two reasons. Now we need to be really careful because sometimes when we get these questions at school and it says, give two or tick two, we only remember to do one. So we need two reasons why the fire spread so quickly. So, oh, easily. There's my key word, easily. So one reason why the fire spread so quickly was because the houses were made of wood. And another reason, and another reason was they were built very close together. So if it makes it easier, you can do a number one and a number two to remind you to write two reasons. So number one, um, the houses were made of wood. That meant that they would burn easily and they were close together. And that's why the fire spread so easily. Number two, 
the houses were close together. So I've remembered I needed two reasons. And then the last question today, what were the new buildings made of? Hmm, now I don't think it'll be up here because that's where we were talking about the fire. And that's an old picture. Ah, this looks like a new picture. Does it tell me anything about the new buildings here? No, oh, new buildings. I can see my keyword, new buildings. The new buildings were made of brick. I can actually just copy that whole sentence from the text. The new buildings were made of brick. Lovely. So I've used the text to answer my questions. Now, you're going to have a go at this comprehension. So you're going to have a go at reading this. Now, if you're struggling a little bit with your reading, don't forget to use Fred to Fred out your words. So look for the special friends and read it carefully. Once you've read it once, you could maybe ask a grown-up to read it to you and see if they can help you with your reading. Then you've got some questions. Now, if you can't print this out, you might get the grown-up to write the questions down for you. Okay. And some of the questions are like what Miss Ford was just showing you where we'd write sentences. But some of them are tick questions and some of them are draw line questions. So if it says tick one, how many we're going to tick? Yes, just one. And then it says draw lines to match. So these things over here, you draw a line to match with these over here. It says number the events. So once you read this through, it should tell you what happens and what order. So the first thing would be number one. And then the second, third and fourth thing would be one, two, three, four. So you should put four numbers in there. Now here it says find and copy one word. So you'd actually have to find that word and copy it. And then this one is a question. So you'd have to answer in a sentence like Miss Ford did. So remember, really read this carefully. Get a grown up to read it to you too if you need some help. Then use this to answer these questions. You can keep this close and you can underline it. And if it asks you about a certain part of the text, then look for that very, very carefully. Use this to answer this. Okay, boys and girls, so you've seen Miss Ford have a go at comprehension and how she found information in the text. Now, it's your go to have a try at reading Samuel Pepys's diary and then answering these five questions for me. I can't wait to see how you get on and keep up the great work at home. We're really proud of you.